an 11 year old college graduate genius, William Malice, who knew his alphabet in six languages by the time he was two and algebra by the time he was five, talks about his desire to prove God exists through science and shares his dream about wanting to become an astrophysicist? I know. Check it out. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. So listen, we're talking about this boy genius today. No, we're not talking about Jonathan Hamilton. We are talking <laughs> about a boy genius. Yes, William yes. Malice. That's his name. William Miles. He's 11 years old. 11 years old. Tell us a little bit about this young man. Well, let me tell you a little bit about him, okay? Before a little he was bit about a him? A little bit about him. Okay. Before he was two years old, William okay. Malice. Wait a minute, before he was two. Before he was two, <laughs> he right. was adding and subtracting before he was two. Now, by the way, what you're seeing is a picture of him holding his college degree. Wait, college? De college oh. degree. That's what you're seeing right there. But let me tell you the backstory here. As a three-year-old, he knew the alphabet mm -hmm. in six languages. <laughs> By age four, is that possible? <laughs> he was an algebra whiz. Mm. At five years old, almost like Isaiah. Almost, right? Curry, almost, yeah, almost like math, Isaiah. Yeah. At five years old, the psychologist mm -hmm. at Ohio State University said the boy was a genius at five. Now, at the ripe young age of eleven, a genius at five. At five. Okay. Malice has officially become a college graduate, receiving an associate's what, degree. How old? Eleven years old. He's graduated from college. Yes, Saint Petersburg We're College. About high school and college. And college by eleven. Okay, eleven. But his education is not finished yet. Right. As he begins classes in a few months at the University of South Florida, mm -hmm. and he's looking towards the heavens. He says, "I want to be an astrophysicist." Okay. Okay. And I want to prove to the world that God exists through science. Oh my goodness. This he says, I'm gifted in what I'm gifted in, and other people are gifted in other things. And it goes on to say that William's not shy about talking about the Creator. He says, Everybody has gifts from God. Mm. I was gifted with knowledge and science and history. He's even humble in yes. regards to what his gifts are. Yes. Wow. Yes, it's amazing. We, so, we weren't gifted in those areas, no, but he was. No, but he was. Yes. And this is really a beautiful thing. Yes, his father, it really is. His father's a priest, mm -hmm. okay? And he's being interviewed by a PhD at uh, Holy Cross uh, School of Technology to other, you know, in front of other college so students young man, and professors. Yes, this what's young his name again? William Malice. So he's being interviewed by a PhD. By a PhD okay. uh, of the college. Yeah. He's sitting next to his father. Mm -hmm. And um, it's an amazing interview. And we have it. We're going to bring let's, it to you today. Let's, let's see this, man. But I want you to just yeah. uh, hear him. This is at the Holy Cross Greek Orthodox School of Technology. And I want you just to hear a little bit about his his theories and, and what, what he believes about space and astrophysicists. Let's join William At 11. Now. At 11. Let's join him now. We're so excited about our new book, I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You gotta have a strategy and you gotta fight. It's not about a physical fight, but you gotta fight. And guess what? If you fight, you win. You'll be successful. This book is about transforming your thoughts, about what your beliefs, the decisions that you're making, about speaking, what you say is so powerful, and what you do, what you're saying, the actions you take. And quitting, don't quit. Listen, success and failure quite often is just five more minutes. And finally, think about this. So many people talk about you should do this and you should do this and you should do this and look what they're doing. They're not doing nothing. You can't let people tell you you should do this. You should. As a matter of fact, they can't be putting their should on you. This is so important. Listen, we want to bless you with your free copy of I Will Fight Strategies for Your Success. You can get it at vfnkb.com. That's vfnkb.com. Get your free copy today. You stated there that you would like to prove that God exists. Can you tell us about that? Well, I could go on about my whole theory, but... Whatever you like. <laughs> that's a little long. Okay. So should I? Yeah. That's okay. why we're here. We're here to learn. So. Okay. Right? Theological school, college. We're here to learn. Okay. Um, let's start with 
the theory of relativity. You know Einstein, right? Yes, I've, I haven't met him, but I know of him, yes. <laughs> um, well, he, in his theory, he said that the displacement of space-time is the cause of gravity. Okay. Sorry. It's okay. And if you're confused what space-time is, recently they found this new particle called, called the Higgs boson. And there, and it makes up the Higgs field, which is essential. So far, I've got you. Following so far. Okay. So Einstein said that the displacement of space-time is the cause of gravity. Okay. If this is the case, then the absence of gravity, or the absence of space-time, must be pure gravity. Because of the law of flow, things will go to the point of least resistance. And if there's nothing there to resist, mm -hmm. that's the point of least resistance. Okay. So, an absence of space-time would be pure gravity. Black holes are an absence of space-time. Which is, is why not, nothing, not even light, can escape their pull. Also... If the universe is all of space-time and the entire Higgs field and all of space-time and matter, everything, then whatever's outside of the universe must be an absence of space-time. If that is the case, then the universe is not expanding into the absolute void around it. It's falling. Now, let's think back to the beginning of time. We know the universe has an age, right? 13.8 mm -hmm. billion years. Did you know that? <laughs> Most of you had no idea what he's talking about. Okay, go ahead. So, 13.8 billion years ago, the entire universe was reduced to a singularity, something a particle smaller than a quark. However, if gravity is always working, i.e. if you jumped off this building, you're not going to fall 15 seconds later. You're going to fall immediately. Mm -hmm. So if gravity is always working, then the and if the singularity was always there, like some atheists try to say, then the universe should have no age. It should be infinitely old. But it's not. It has, it has an age. It's 13.8 billion years old. And something can't come from nothing because it would have to exist in order to cause itself to exist, which is illogical. So therefore, something other must have created the singularity. And that something other we observe as God. Well, Hawking's theory that there should be no cause because of gravity, well, gravity can't create something. Gravity has nothing to. Gravity can't do anything if it can't if it's not acting against something. Gravity is literally nothing, as we stated before. Mm -hmm. And nothing applied on nothing is just nothing. Nothing. Even I can follow that. Okay. Yeah. Wow, is that power? I mean, that's almost like what John and I were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly what our the conversation theory is. Theory of like. what is our sub sandwich going to taste like at <laughs> lunch? So that's pretty powerful. Is that beautiful? You look at an eleven-year-old that's talking about, you know, this gift. Obviously, God's given him of intelligence to to work things through, and it makes such good sense. Sure. You know, I want I want to hear from you. You know, what are your thoughts in the context of of this young man? And if that can happen at eleven, there's hope for us to be able to do it. <laughs> but it's just beautiful for his generation to be. Obviously, he's going to be a leader in his generation. He is now. And uh, what are your thoughts? You know, comment below. You know, give us your thoughts. Maybe you have somebody in your family like that. You know, we have somebody that works with us. It's, it's called, he's oh, literally yeah. identified as a prodigy. And we're going to talk to him during the break about that. But also you can write to us at friends at, at vfnkb.com. This is just amazing. Isn't it encouraging? We are listening to an 11-year-old genius, graduate of a university already, explaining the theory of relativity, gravity, creation, the, the length of the, how, how, how old creation is, the existence of God through science. This is amazing. As a matter of fact, John, talk to us a little yes. about his dreams. Well, his dreams being asked, what are He's his dreams? He's 11 years old. He's 11 years old. Come dreams. 
Yes, he's, he has lofty dreams and goals. He's already accomplished, but most people, most people will have it in a lifetime. Correct. Yes. Correct. He's proven Stephen ha Stephen Hawking Hawkins wrong. wrong. Yes. A, God's <laughs> using an eleven, a child, a, yeah. a child man, man child, yeah. <laughs> eleven year old, to prove all these years of Stephen Hawkins, Hawkins. wrong. Yeah. In so his theory. It's it's, oh. it's really amazing, it's amazing. to watch it this is. young man. He's being interviewed there by a PhD, uh, I believe a priest at the Holy Cross School of Technology, and the priest asks him, um, what, what are your dreams? Watch William now. I want to be an astrophysicist. So astrophysicist? Yes. Okay. So that I can prove to the scientific world that God does exist. There's these atheists that try to say that there is no God, when in, when in reality, it takes more faith to believe that there's no God than it does to t believe that there is a God. Please say that again. That's an incredible statement. Because it makes more sense that something created the universe than, say, the universe created itself. That takes more faith to say the universe created itself than to say something other created the universe, because that is more logical. It's so interesting, right? <laughs> you think about it, that a man is born from a woman, right? Mm -hmm. And he, his diapers have to get changed. He has to be fed by a bottle. He has to be raised by his parents. And one day he decides that he's smarter than God. And he says that God doesn't exist. And it's like, wait a minute. You were born from your mother. <laughs> you know, you were raised with a bottle. Right. And 11-year-olds helping everyone understand that, you know, it takes more faith to actually believe that God doesn't exist than he does exist. And really, if you don't know him, if you don't have a personal relationship with him, it, it's, it's, that's the blocking point. Yeah. But once you get to know him through his son, Jesus Christ, he's real. He exists. He'll come and live in your heart, as a matter of fact. And it all and makes speaks. sense. speaks. Yes, and he definitely speaks. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfnkb.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.